Hi, and welcome to this video on Apex Web Credentials. What are Apex Web Credentials? So they're a mechanism for securely storing credentials in your Apex workspace. They operate at the workspace level, so all of your applications have access to these credentials. Uh, you can then reference these credentials from various Apex components, uh, like the Apex Web Service API or even REST data sources. And you can maintain these credentials using PLSQL APIs, which we'll see shortly. Um, there's a whole number of different supported credential types. There's basic authentication for like username and password type credentials, or two client credentials where you store the client ID and client secret, and Apex takes care of grabbing the token. There's OCI native authentication for accessing OCI services like object storage. HTTP header authentication. So you have like a bearer token in the HTTP header. There's also query string, database credentials created through DBMS credential or DBMS cloud.credential and key pair public private key credentials. So let's have a look at how we can create some of these credentials. So I'm gonna start with basic authentication and we're gonna enter a credential to allow us to access Fusion REST APIs. So I'm going to go to Web Credentials and create a new one. Test. Basic authentication. That's the username. And then we can paste in the password. So that's all it takes to create that basic authentication credential. Let's go ahead and, and use that credential. So we go into shared components. I'm going to go create a REST source. And we're going to create a Oracle Cloud Apps SaaS REST source. Have a URL handy here. Is that right? And then there's some various options for Fusion SAS REST APIs. I'm going to pick the credential that I just created, and then we can do discovery on that. So Apex is then using that credential to authenticate against Fusion and pulling back the data. All right, so let's look at another type of credential. So this time we're going to create an OCI native um, credential. So this is a credential that's going to access, allow us to access OCI services. So I'm going to call this one OCI native. And we're going to select OCI native authentication. Now it's quite a complex process for grabbing the various fields that you see here for defining a credential for OCI native authentication. I have a blog post on how to do that and I will um, include that in the the notes. I'm going to copy paste the values in here just so we can see this in action. I just need now the tenancy ID and the fingerprint. So that's the credential created. So I'm going to go and create another REST source. This time it's going to be on a web service to list objects in the object store bucket. So let's call this. So this is a Oracle Cloud Infrastructure OCI web service. I'll call this OCI. Here's the endpoint to my bucket. Click next. Authentication required. And we want our OCI native credential. And then we'll do discover and we can see the list of files that are in that bucket. Nice, right? So let's go back to credentials and create another type of credential. So now we're going to create a HTTP header type credential, but we're going to go and create it through using the PLSQL APIs. So I have this test set up here. So we're going to create a credential. Um, so first of all, I'm just setting the workspace 
and then I'm calling the apex credential dot create credential and I'm actually going to create an open AI credential that we're going to use shortly. So this is the bearer token. So this is how you do a bearer token. The HTTP header is authorization and the HTTP value is bearer and then the token. So if I run this guy, so I've now got a, I should now have a credential called OpenAI. So let's go back to our credentials and there's our new credential. So let's go use that credential in the generative AI service. So I'm going to create an OpenAI Gen AI service. And I'm going to use the OpenAI credential that we just created. And if I go back to SQL commands and refresh my page, I now have the OpenAI assistant. So I can ask it, how do Apex web credentials work? So that's now using my credential to authenticate against OpenAI. All right, so let's look at one more type of credential. And this is OAuth2 client credentials. So I'm going to create an OAuth2 client credential and then we're going to use it to access Microsoft Office um, calendar entries. I have a number of blog posts on the details of how to do that Microsoft Office integration. But let's focus on the web credential creation here. So we're going to create a new one and I'm going to call it MSO Calendar. This time we want OAuth2 client credentials. And for this particular API for Microsoft, we need to provide an OAuth scope. And then the client ID and client secret that we got from our application definition in Microsoft Entra. Again, my blog posts go into detail on how you can obtain those credentials. So I've created that credential now. So let's go and create a REST API using that credential. REST data sources, we're going to create a new one. It's going to be a simple HTTP. Oops, and we're going to call it Microsoft Calendar again. So we're going to use the Microsoft Graph API for calendar events. And grab the calendar events for my user. So this is the user ID parameter that it Apex passed out. That all looks good. We're not going to deal with pagination right now. So let's pick our MS Office calendar. Now for the token URL, we need to include our tenant ID. So that URL needs to be expanded a little. And now we can discover. And Apex has used that web credential to call the Microsoft Office Graph API to list all of my calendar entries. All right, so that's the end of this video on web credentials. Hopefully it gave you a good idea of um, different types of authentications you can create with web credentials.